Hey folks, in this video, this very special video, I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Troy Miller, whom if you're in the Twip Pro community, you have already met and hung out with him. But for this video, I decided, or we decided that it would be good to walk through focus stacking, the technique of focus stacking, what it's for, who it's for, all that stuff. So Troy and I are gonna have a conversation about focus stacking briefly, and then Troy's gonna dive in and show some some practical examples of how he would take a set of images from images sitting on a hard drive all the way through to running them through some software to get that final focus stacked image. Troy Miller, you ready to do this? How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, yep. Still thinking of your, of your lattice. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so what he's alluding to, folks, is um, I you know, I like analogies. Sorry, metaphors and analogies, as he said. And I said we I was basically setting the stage for how we're going to discuss this this topic. And I said basically what we want to do is provide a lattice work for their focus stacking vine to grow on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good analogy. I love it. I love it. That's why I brought it up. No, I'm, I know. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And I'm ready to I'm ready to help encourage the vine. So all right. Let's let's build a vine. So let's start let's start the conversation just with setting the stage, focus stacking. And why should why should photographers care about focus stacking? What is focus stacking? You know, what what powers does it give us? So let me let me explain from my perspective and then you can fill in the blanks where I'm incorrect. Uh, focus stacking, <laughs> focus stacking is the, the method of taking a series of images at varying, I'm, I'm guessing they should be at a, uh, at a predetermined interval between the, between the focus points, but basically you're taking a photo at, at different focus points throughout a depth of field range so that you can then take those and combine them into one super crisp photo that has focus all the way through beyond the range that your camera could do optically. Is that, is that close? Right. Uh, no, that's very true. Ba basically, uh, you know, focus stacking is like an HDR, HDR to uh, tonal range or exposure range. Focus stacking is the same thing to your focus range, right? And so, uh, exactly. And you can use that uh, for macro work where you have very shallow depth of fields to, uh, you know, landscapes where you may want to stack one or two images or, or even more, uh, depending on, you know, what your goal is, you know. So it's a... It's a technique that I think we all know about and we hear about, and then we don't often use. I think it's underutilized. So getting to experiment with it and play with it kind of gets your brain thinking and you can be creative with it. And it's kind of cool. It's cool, in, cool in what In what real world situations would a photographer need to employ this though? I mean, is, you're not gonna do focus stacking on a portrait or a landscape, or would you? I mean, if you got something you, in the foreground, maybe, I don't know. So focus stacking with a portrait would be would be tough, um, although you could you can do it because, you know, the p people are going to move. But let's imagine mm -hmm. like in a landscape <clears throat> that you have a, a, a beautiful scene in the distance and you want your hyperfocal length and you want to be able to get, you know, the distance as much as possible. But you want to put some cool foreground. Maybe there's a log or a tree or a branch or something, and it's just going to be completely blurry. And you're like, well, how do I get that in focus and my hyperfocal length? Maybe my aperture isn't going to give me the depth of field that I want. Well, you focus stack it. And it, focus stacking isn't always about having to make everything in the scene in focus. It's just about getting focus to the point that you want on the subjects that you want within that scene. So there's a lot of manipulation that you can do in there as well. So that, that might be some real world stuff. Um, or uh, if you're shooting product, uh, oftentimes focus stacking can really help uh, when you're photographing products or you're doing like smaller uh, macro kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, really cool. Yeah, I want to see this stuff. So you prepared some, some uh, you know, some Julia Childs ready to show. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, Julia Childs, I'm showing my age, right? Uh, <laughs> just some some pre prepackaged elements to demonstrate this technique, right? I did, I did. Um, okay, I had to turn the heater off because it just kicked on and I'm gonna <laughs> melt. <laughs> heater in California? <laughs> I know, I know, isn't that crazy? So, all right, so let me turn some lights on over here for it real quick, because I got a little demo set up. Um, and most of our, okay, there we go. 
One of the nice things is, is um, the way that I'm going to show you is either a manual way. It, 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 technically, it's a manual way, but but the camera is going to do the steps for me, but you could also do it manually. And if you're shooting mirrorless, then it becomes a lot easier. So let me switch over to that camera, get a nice fuzzy image. There we go. We got our ninja sitting on the, on the Star Trek, <laughs> um, awesome. on the hull of the ship there. Um, so basically what's going to happen in focus stacking is if you can see sort of that red that's that's going to move through the image, uh, that's our focus peaking. So right now at like F4, even if we were to move this up uh, like a little bit, you're not going to get a lot more depth of field. But that's what's in focus right now. But what if just, I want... Just real, quick, just real quick, just to hover on the focus peaking bit for a minute. For the folks that may not know what focus peaking is and never seen that in their cameras, do all cameras have focus peaking? And and if and for those that do, how do you enable it? Because you have to enable it. It only shows up in, in, if you're in manual, I'm guessing, on this, at least on the Nikons, right? Um, no, it'll show up even in, in autofocus. So right now we, we are in autofocus. Um, see, I can like hit the button and it will autofocus and yeah. look at it, it's even grabbing his eye, which is great. Um, but as soon as I turn the manual focus ring, then it, then it shows me the, uh, focus peaking. Yeah. Now I don't, I don't recall like in any cameras where that information is. I know that on the Nikon, it's like in your photo shooting menu somewhere. Um, I think that pretty much all mirrorless cameras, at least the modern mirrorless cameras have focus peaking. Mm -hmm. Um, the D5 and the D850, <clears throat> which were DSLRs, <clears throat> they had it when you went into like video mode. But the wonderful thing about having focus peaking, and if you have a mirrorless camera and you're not using it, is the ability to see where that that sort of depth of field is. So you can see that red line travel backwards. That's that's where critical focus is. And you can see that I, I can't get this whole image in focus. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Even if I were to shoot at, you know, like F22 or F64 or F128, like I'm not going to get it all in focus, right? And then and then you're going to have sharpness issues because of the small aperture and, you know, we won't get into all that. But so there's two ways to do this. You could manually go in there and say, okay, I'm going to start right here, take a photo, turn the, the focus, take a photo, turn the focus, take a photo, turn the focus, take a photo and you want them to overlap, and then you'll have a series of images. Or uh, most of our modern cameras now have an option to focus stack. So like in here, the Nikon calls it focus shifting, and you can see that it's under the, the photo shooting menu. So we're going to go in there, and you're going to decide how many images you want to take and how big of step you want those steps to be. Now you're going to ask yourself, like, well, how do I know? <laughs> I was There's no way to know. Thing. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no way to know. You just you have to just kind of learn it <clears throat> and guess it. So, for example, let's do a we'll do a 30 image step here real quick. So I'm going to go up to start. Now, what I like to do, because you can see like, well, you can't see it moving, but the camera shakes. So what I'm going to do is I have a touch screen on the back and I'm going to very gently hit start. And I don't know if you can, if you can hear that. Mm hmm. That's why the screen went away. So now what happened is, is it took 30 images and I'll scroll back. You can see, there we go. Oh, I have to hit play. I'm a dork. All right, there we go. <laughs> I was wondering, um, I was like, that looks like a live image. Yeah, there so go. there's there's what it there's what it took, right? So from here all the way to there, and I have to see like, well, that went far enough, but I didn't start soon enough. Right. So I'm going to, so let's do another one. Yeah. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start closest to you. So I might go just, just there and I'll go back in. So it takes a little bit of experimentation and this time let's up this like 60 images and I'll hit start. So you, you set the start point and how many images, but you don't set a stop point. So you don't, you can't say I want everything from here to back there to be in focus and have it shoot the images in the middle. 
Right, right. That's exactly true. So what what's happening is just that um, it's going to take what, what however it decides what the step is going to be. That's going to it's going to use those that many steps, sixty images, move through the photo that distance in that interval. So let me let me show you the back of the camera. Yeah. So on the back of the camera, oops. There we go. So when we're in the shooting menu, and this is, the, I mean, this is just kind of where it gets a little confusing. So I have this ability to change the shooting steps. I don't know how much it tweaks the focus through the image, whether it's a narrow band or a wide band, like how far it's going to go. I don't know. You have to experiment with it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't say like, oh, it's going to move one tenth of 1% this distant. Like, I don't, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't think that it tells you. So this is the 60 images. Now notice how far back in the scene it went all the way, way to the very, very back of the image. Let me get back there. Okay. And then I'm going to roll that forward. You can see, wow, it covered, you know, almost everything. Oh, my ninja's in focus. Oh, he's slightly out of focus. Perfect. Which means I have everything in focus. Cool. And that's, that's definitely our goal, right? Is to go all the way through that image. Um, that was my goal. You don't have to though. You could decide like, oh, I only want to go this much into my image and then only shoot maybe 10 images. Maybe 10 images would be better. So for example, let's say, and this is where you get creative. Let's say I only want to grab this and I only want to make sure that the NCC 17 becomes in focus. That's that's only a little ways into the scene, right? So let me set my set my focus start point. It's always the closest to you, at least on the Nikon. So I always like it to be out of focus. And then I will choose. I think I could probably do it in like, let's try to do it in 20 images. And I'll hit start. There we go. And while that's shooting, Troy, you're shooting, you're on a, a Nikon Z9 or Z9, as it were, right? So you're shooting on yep. that, and then you're piping HDMI out of that camera into your ATEM. Is that is that your Correct. setup? Correct. Okay, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So you can see as we go through this image, th th this is just experimentation, right? As I go through this image, notice that the NCC is not quite in focus, but mm -hmm. I, I like it. Maybe that's enough. If you wanted the enterprise, the USS enterprise to be in focus, you're like, well, okay, I got to do more steps. Right. Um, and the more, the more that you shoot, the more that you'll get used to like, oh, this is a, uh, you know, the distance is five and I'm going to do a hundred, I'm going to do a hundred images. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So the, the, the trial and error, and you said the start point, it'll, <laughs> it'll start and then just basically roll that plane of focus back for the number of of uh, right. images you say you want you want to create and then now you have a folder i'm guessing or a, at least a bunch of similarly named images on the hard drive now yeah what? yeah i can show you that so okay. also some cameras will build you a preview of your stack and then you can look at that image in camera and be like oh i like that um I don't think the Z9 does that. I couldn't find I couldn't find an image that does that. Also, on the Z9, it puts all the images in a new folder. So when you look at them on the computer, they're all in different folders, which is really nice. So you can turn that option on. Um, I'll show you real quick for anybody that's shooting um, a Nikon. Let me turn that back on. Um, right down here at the bottom where it says Start Storage Folder. Mm -hmm. and you set that to new folder. So what happens is every time I do another image sequence, it'll create a new folder on the card. So it makes it very easy to go in and find. So everybody's system will probably do you be do that? Different. I mean, do you do that when you're shooting day to day, like weddings and, and those sort of things? Do you have it start a new folder every time? Um, no, I, that's specific to the time lapse. It creates a new folder for every time that you shoot a sequence. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and, and your, your mileage may vary depending on what brand of camera. I did test that on the Z5, the Z6 II and the Z9. They all have the same menu and it looks like the same options and same functionality. So, Good. um, 
good looking out for us good looking up looking out for us lower lower life forms out here <laughs> what's with our lowly z6s removed. <laughs> yeah you i'll use e6 people <laughs> Get a life. Get yeah. a Z9. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure, right? Because sometimes there's a feature set that are different in some of the different cameras. So, yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, let's step through the the uh, the put them all together into one crisp, okay, focused image flow. Yep. Go ahead and share the screen. The screen's ready there. All right. All right. So what we have here. Is I brought these images into Capture One. Now I'm using Capture One. You can use Lightroom, and then we're going to go to Helicon Focus, which uses which has a plugin for either Lightroom or Capture One. So it makes it very very nice. Um, it, it, this is something that I shot a little bit earlier, so it's very much the same thing. And you can kind of see if I jump in there and I want to scroll, you can actually see how far in a focus goes. Nice. Yeah, and and when you're doing this, like it always shoot more data than you need. So for example, if I don't want the USS Enterprise to be in focus, I only want it to go to maybe like the NCC 17 or something. I only need to use those images in the stack, right? I don't need to use all the images. I only need to use what I want. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're simply going to make sure. So if you edit your images, so like you have in this image, I've, I've actually uh, cropped it and changed the color tone. Make sure that you do that exactly the same to all your other images um, so that they're all formatted and they can align easily. So I'm gonna select them all and I'm gonna hit edit with, and we're gonna go into stack with Helicon Focus. If you don't have a plugin and you just have like a standalone Helicon Focus, uh, you can actually go in and say, oh, you know, import these images like from JPEGs or something. Um, and it'll stack them. So before you run that, so or can't Photoshop? Photoshop can't take a series of images and create a stacked, a focus stacked um, final shot? They can, but Photoshop would take longer than this entire recording to stack these images that are going to happen in like 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's not good. Uh, you know, it's just, it's not a good stack. <laughs> okay. I think yeah. those are two pretty good reasons. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, and, you know, to be fair, like, I don't know what, what Adobe's intention was with their photo stacking. Maybe they didn't expect somebody like me to stack, you know, 70 images. Um, but there's a good chance that, that it's meant for less images. So it works pretty decently, but Helicon just rips through them so fast. And you can see we're processing down here in the lower right-hand corner. And basically, that's outputting uh, high-res TIFFs, which I probably should have done ahead of time just to save us time. But um, So it's doing it real time see. as we speak. Yeah, maybe we can fast forward this bit if we need to. Right? <laughs> well, I, I, think it's, I think it's fair to kind of see how long it actually takes um, to, to process uh, a focus stack, right? Like, it's not something that happens really quickly, and you have to put time into it. So, and... These are 33 meg files, each one of these raw files from the Z9. So I'm running them on like a medium uh, JPEG or a medium raw. Okay, so here we are uh, in Helicon Focus. So that happened really quickly. And I'm not going to go through Helicon. It's, I'm just learning it myself. So there's not a whole lot that, I get, that I'm going to get into with it. But what I want to do is here's the stack. Here's the images, right? They're all in there. Um, and I'm just going to tell it to render. And so this is this is what would take um, Photoshop. Uh, I'm not kidding. Probably 45 minutes for me to run this, and it's not going to look good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. So this is just going to rip through there, and you can actually see it working on the right. So it's taking every little bit of the the band that's in focus, and it's building an image from that, which is just so cool. So once it gets, beautiful. yeah. Okay, so there you go. So so there's your image on the right. And then literally all I would do is I would say save. And I don't know, we'll like put this on the desktop and we'll save it as a TIFF. There you go. So that image, that image is done. That's it. That's wow. it, yep. That wow. image is done. Um, now there are, there are errors in here 
uh, that you have to watch for. So when you're focus stacking like little areas like down here around his, his legs and his feet and in this little hole, Helicon did not recognize that and didn't fix it. Uh, so what you might want to do is you might want to go back and you might want to build it again using a different method because um, they have different methods for, for rendering that. So like this one, we'll try to render it again and see what it does. Um, but that's your that's going to be your basic build for a, a focus stack. Helicon has the ability to go in and retouch those areas, meaning add detail from a layer, remove detail from a layer. I have not gotten that deep into it yet, so I'm, I can't demo that. I, I'm not that good at this. <laughs> yeah, but look at that draw. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it's, it's really neat. So, so this is this is a, a technique for taking a series of images that it, that you then compress into one focused image that goes through the whole depth of field range, right? What right. if you? I mean, are, does Helicon generate any sort of alpha channels or anything for you to go in and paint things in? Or, like you said, if it makes a mistake, you can correct and have it intelligently know that, oh, he wants, he wants this in focus. So let me pull from that image right here. Does it, does it do they, that? It does. Uh, it has a, it has a whole retouching tab and um, I'm just finishing another render. So I don't know if I can go into it. I have I have not learned how to use that, but that's one of the benefits of using a Photoshop style method, uh, affinity photo does it mm -hmm. as well. So if okay. you don't, if you already have like affinity photo, it does great on stacks. Okay. Um, it's it's yeah. slower than Helicon, but every layer is saved. So technically you could go into a layer and say, oh, I want the sharpness from this layer to o to come into to come into the visual range that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And you can you can unmask it, if you will, or mask other areas. So basically each one of these is like a layer mask. And that's how it yeah yeah and, and i and i wish you know that i could tell you exactly uh how to go in here and edit <laughs> a focus stack i, I don't know how i have yeah. not had to well it. this is not uh, a comprehensive tutorial this is a this is the lattice work you're right <laughs> so you gotta grow your own vine on <laughs> Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Thanks for walking through that. Um, so, yeah. so in terms of the, the folks in the photo critique that are going to be um, experimenting with this feature, th what are some different things that they should experiment with? Right. So you did it on sort of a model Ninja and the, the USS Enterprise NCC 01, 1701. Um, what what should they play with like what are like more not just okay i'm going to experiment and see how it works on this you know this toy but something something more impactful um jewelry is really fun uh gems rocks uh small things coins watches anything that has a lot of small detail mm -hmm. um you know, if you've if, if, if you've got, say, for example, you know, like a wedding ring or uh, like a mechanical watch that's got the hands and the little details in there, the if you can open the back of a watch or a pocket watch so that you can actually see the mechanism inside, that's super cool to do uh, macro. I mean, not to do just macro, but do focus stacking on um, insects. You know, if you can get something to hold still long enough, uh, you can shoot your focus stack there. Um, Wow. And, and another technique for shooting uh, focus stacking, so let's say you're out in the wild and you're chasing insects, um, you can do it by hand. You know, you don't have to let it step through the image for you. You can do it by hand. Hmm. And uh, the, way, the way that you would do that, so I'm just going to grab a camera here. So the way that you would do that, right, is if, I'm, if I want to do that on like this microphone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get focus, okay? I'm going to lock my focus. I'm going to shoot as high a frame rate as possible. And I'm going to, I'm going to slightly lean into the shot and it's going to take a series of images and the focus will move through that subject. Yeah. You got, then you got like three, four, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 images you can stack. And now you just did a focus stack. But will it, I mean, you're hand holding that, right? So it's not yeah. going to be perfect all the way through. Is it going to do the no auto alignment and do all that magic for you? Okay. Yep. Okay. Crazy good. It's crazy, crazy good. 
Wow, really? Even with <laughs> lens breathing and things like that, where when you change focus or move through a scene, the the size and perspective of an image change of an object changes, um, it it'll fix all of that. Yeah. So yeah. So devil's advocate. So so in your example with the ninja and the enterprise there. Some photographers may say, okay, that's a lot of work to, in software and math in order to get to that final image. Why wouldn't he just go, you know, take a couple of steps back and use a longer focal length, which will give him presumably a little bit more depth of field to get the shot that way in one snap of the shutter versus getting close and having that super shallow depth of field that you have to step through and then build later? Like, What, what, what would be the, uh, the argument to that? There's so many reasons why to do that or not to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, one is 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 perspective, like depth in the image. So it, when you back up and shoot with a long lens, you're compressing the image, so you you lack depth. So the reason that you're getting depth of field is because you're compressing the image. I don't. I, maybe I don't want compression in there. You know, maybe I want to see some depth. So the, the I want the ninja to look like he's big and far forward, and then mm -hmm. you know there's distance behind him. Well, you you got to get in there. You got to get closer to do that. Um, when I when I photograph weddings, I regularly shoot with like a seventy to two hundred to shoot rings and macro stuff because I do exactly what you're saying because it's what I can do quickly and it's the most efficient way to do it in that time. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, if you want to play with more perspective and you want to get in closer and have more fine detail, focus stacking is really is really the magic for that. Yeah, and that, I think the takeaway that was a I I know you were gonna say that that was a loaded question, but the <laughs> I think the takeaway is from this is and I would argue most if not all techniques and gear and software in in the world of photography or content creation that we're in is that you as the artist get to pick the tool that's right for your job in that situation right. and the lighting and the end result that you're looking for and all that. It's this is not to say that. Every like every every you're not a hammer and everything you look at is now a nail, right? It's right. okay. I need to figure this out. Client wants this, or I'm looking for this for my personal project. I really need to get that in focus, and it has to be like this. I can't get enough focus on this thing, so I got to use focus stacking. Boom. Yep. So you use the right tool for the right job, right? When you can. Yep. So. Yeah, cool. and, and let me just add, so once you start yeah. playing with focus stacking and, and, and you start to build images and your expectation of what those images are going to look like are going to change, meaning that you're, you're going to think that you want an image to look a certain way and focus stacking images can come out really, really bizarre because the software is literally stacking, right? So your depth of field may not be as beautiful as you want it to be it, it may look weird there may be specular highlights that look funky or like it's but because you're stacking all these images together and the software sometimes makes it look strange just be just be prepared for surprises in your images that you may or may not like yeah. um yeah and 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 i can actually show you a, an example of that if we share my screen again yeah. Um, so if we look at the left image and you look at the, the bokeh in, you know, behind the ninja, even though he's out of focus, I like that bokeh a lot more. It's kind of soft and subtle, but if you look at the image as it's rendered, that depth of field back there looks really strange. Yeah. It, yeah. It you don't see really... that in nature, right? <laughs> yeah. It didn't fall off quite right. And you know, how, how do you fix that? Well, that's where you got to get into, um, uh, you know, the fixing some of the layers or you shoot this so that it's sharp all the way through 100% and then in post you blur it or soften it. So, um, but it just, a lot of times when I show somebody how to do focus stacking, they get images like this or like, that looks ridiculous. Like, how do I fix that? <laughs> that it's focus stacking, my friend. It's it's weird stuff, <laughs> you know. It's voodoo, right? It's kind of like um, the with the way you describe this is it seems very similar to exposure stacking, right? Or where or is it like when you're doing shots when you're doing your Milky Way shots and you need to take a series of Im images to a reduce noise or do whatever, um, right. you're combining a bunch of singular images of a singular 
subject to make one yeah. better image. It's the same. Is it very similar? It just instead yeah. of turning the focus ring, is changing the exposure value or EV? Yeah, I mean, look, this this is this is one of the cool things about digital photography that we never had in film is that you know we can take multiple images and run them through these post processing methods and create something that's virtually impossible to do in camera unless you're you know shooting with bellows and you know all that kind of stuff a tilt shift lens and even then it looks different so yeah stacking exposures uh, uh, stacking f for focus it's it's a neat thing yeah and they're very similar in what they're yeah. accomplishing yeah very cool very good stuff well folks you have your uh you have your last work courtesy of troy miller if you're in the community <laughs> troy troy has said you can message him day or night inside of twitter <laughs> and I mean, he, yeah, will, yeah. he will respond within 10 minutes of your message about focus stacking so no, he didn't. He did not. <laughs> but I mean, they can message you if they have a question. You can message me in the yeah in the community, of course. Yeah, he may respond in a week or two, but he will message. He will get back to you. <laughs> no, he's good about that. Well, cool, man. Thanks for stepping through this. This is this is very yeah, helpful. And I wanted, like I said at the beginning, I wanted to do this just to, in case folks were like, what is this focus stacking? I don't want to participate in this this particular critique. I don't have a use for it, or I don't know how to use it, or I don't have a tripod, or my camera doesn't support A, B, and C, or whatever. Now you can see what the basics of it are. It's like a, this right. basic steps of taking a bunch of photos that are out of focus and you know, for a reason, right? Um, but right. out of focus at different different exposure or uh, focus points, and then boom, put them together in the software, whether it be the software that Troy recommended. And Troy, you'll you'll give me a link to that, and I'll put that in the description to that software that you're using. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll put that in there. So whether you're using that or you're using Affinity Photo or even Photoshop you can get there from here. It's just going to be your quality and time expenditure may vary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And level of yeah. control. It, it really will come down uh, to the level of control that you want over your final image. Very cool. Yep. All right, Troy Miller. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, right. of course. See you later. Yep. Take care, guys.